What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Batania. Uh, today guys, we are going to be setting up an automated orchid. Now if you don't know what this flower does, it basically takes stone blocks and it turns them into ore blocks. Now this is extremely useful, but it's also pretty darn balanced. Uh, it takes a ton of mana to actually make one block of stone, turn into an ore, and you get very common ores much more frequently than the rarer ones. So I would say you get coal like over 50% of the time and you get diamond less than 1% of the time, but it's still very useful. So we're gonna be setting that up today. Now we're gonna be doing a full setup, including automation of the cooking of most of the ores such as iron and gold. But if you're playing in a mod pack and you prefer to just put them in a chest or you know have them processed in another way that actually gets more ore from each ore block or more ingots from each ore block. Uh, you don't have to do this full setup, but we are going to be going through and doing a furnace automation setup too, just so that we can cook everything down into an ingot. And then of course leave the redstone and diamonds to be fortuned with a pick once we get it. So there's a fair bit of stuff that we need to actually use today. And it looks like we are being joined by a pigman who made his way over from the portal, but uh, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that we need to do today, and so I went through and I crafted majority of the stuff that we are going to need. I had to go and get all the different ores that you could possibly run into. Uh, getting the emerald was kind of annoying, and I've actually never seen an emerald come from an orchid, but there's no reason it shouldn't be able to create them. So we've got all those. I crafted all the stuff that's going on over here. I filled up mana tablets. So we should be all good to go. The only thing we are actually going to be crafting, I guess you could say today, is going to be the orchid. Now it does require a fair bit of rune crafting because you need the rune of pride and the rune of greed. And as you can see, this one requires the summer and fire and two mana diamonds. So it is kind of expensive. We've already made the greed on camera before I think, but it's water spring and then two mana diamonds again. So we're gonna be crafting this. Of course, you need the pixie dust, which means you need elven trade unlocked. But if you have the mana, to actually set this up, then you should have Elven Trade, you know, already done long ago. So we're gonna grab all this stuff out from right over here. It does have a redstone root, so you can turn it off if you really want to. And we need to fill up a water bucket. Oh, we already have one ready to go. So there we go. This guy's being kind of obnoxious, but I don't feel like killing him right now until he becomes too much of an annoyance. Uh, so we'll get this stuff down here and we'll be good to go. So this is an interesting setup, and I've seen some really good setups that I will be kind of basing this one off of, but the reason it's going to be different is because some of the mechanics basing uh, are based around the orchid have changed since a lot of these setups were made, and mainly it is timing. So the orchid does not automatically turn stone blocks into ore. It's not the snap of a finger and it's done. It does have a slightly randomized time to actually convert them. So just something to keep in mind if you're looking at older setups, they should still work. You just need to give it a little bit more allotted time. Uh, so we're going to be making this into a floating orchid. Now, one thing that is unfortunate is when you are setting this up, you have to be very, very careful because it will turn any stone block in its radius, which should be, and this is considered the orchid, the center and 11 by 11 by six, it goes up to down three and out five. It'll turn any block of stone in there into an ore and it takes a ton of mana to do so. So you gotta be really careful. Now you can't make these petite as far as I'm aware. So, you know, you're rocking the floating orchid. You need to have that space open that does not have any stone. Now we're gonna be setting it up over here. And as you can see, I filled in a fair bit of dirt around just in general, this dirt block. This should be roughly where the floating orchid will go. If anything starts randomly turning into ore, I will go find it and I'll just cut and, you know, fix it and we'll jump back. But something to keep in mind, you might want to make it over, you know, high up in the air or, you know, in a base that does not have any stone near it. Obviously, us being on the ground causes a little bit of a problem. But another thing to keep in mind, and lastly, before we actually jump into this, one more thing of information, the Orchid Ignum is basically an orchid that works in the nether. It only works in the nether and we'll do netherrack instead. Now this is a lot less optimal actually because you can't automatically produce the netherrack like we would the stone. So it would require a completely different setup and I'm not even actually sure if you could automate this like we do the stone, but uh, yeah, I don't know why you would really wanna use that. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna be setting this up today. There's gonna be two different areas. There's going to be the main area for getting the ore and then another side area for actually breaking uh, the coal that will get us the actual coal itself from the ore. And then we'll be picking that up and using it to cook stuff. So we're gonna be using a furnace, a dispenser. I would say take a stack to two stacks of sand because that's what we're gonna need. Three hovering hourglasses for the main setup. 
uh, roughly five hoppers, an infestation spore, a lava and water bucket, a pulse mana spreader, a weight lens, one slab of any choice, a couple mana pools, eight item frames, two floating hopper hawks, and then we're going to be using for the second part, uh, we're going to need the pulse mana spreader, an open crate, a hovering hourglass, a little bit more sand, but of course we only have a little bit over a stack right now. Uh, you're going to need roughly seven of any block that you don't frequently have for the floating ran and carpus. You will need a floating ran and carpus, a bore lens, just a regular one, a lever to turn it on and off, two mana pools, and then I've got a chest, and then we've got a fair bit of mana tablets in here, which I will leave in here. And it looks like we are running out of space, so I might dump this in here, dump some of our empty buckets, and we can start grabbing out most of this ore. Now, I'm probably going to get rid of my regular mana tablet for now. And is there anything else I can get rid of in here? Uh, you know, I guess we don't really... Well, we, we don't need the lever right now. So, we've got a full inventory. We've got a lot of stuff to work with. So, we should really jump into this. Uh, I'm pretty excited to actually, you know, put this episode out. So, right, right here is roughly where I'm going to be putting the uh, floating orchid. So, I just want to keep that in mind with this dirt block. If it does get shifted a little bit, we should be perfectly fine anyway. But what we're going to be doing is setting up something that is very similar to the stone production we have over here. Just adjusted a very, very small amount. So what we're going to do is start building kind of a staircase-like setup. And I guess we can build it into the wall like this. So you're going to put two blocks like this. And then you are going to put your living rock half slab. Or I'm going to put the living rock. It can be any half slab you want right there. Then we're going to put bricks behind this. You don't actually need them back there. But then we're going to put another layer right here. And then we've got the final layer right here. Now, something to keep in mind is I do not have any glass right now. So we might not be able to see everything that we want to see. Uh, but if you do want to see what's going on inside here, you can use any block for this and specifically glass. So now we have to do a little bit of thinking because this always gets me when I try and set this up. But what we need is the stone block to form right here. So the stone block will be forming right here, one air block above where this half slab is. And so we are going to be putting the mana spreader, one of the pulse mana spreaders, right in front of this. And then we are going to be putting a hovering hourglass right next to it. And then we're going to be putting a mana pool right below it. So we'll put this one right down here. So what we can do now is come back here and the water is going to be going right at this block right here. And we are going to put another mana pool right back here. And that'll catch all the excess mana that is not used. And then you can put it back in because, you know, running this constantly does use a fair bit of mana. Of course, the biggest mana consumption for this whole setup is going to be the Orchid itself. I don't know if I already mentioned this, but you can get, I believe, 56, maybe 55, depending on how it rounds, transformations of stone per mana pool. So you really don't get that much. So I don't know how often we're going to be running this right now. We're getting a fair bit of mana from our setup over there, but still just something to keep in mind. So the stone block is going to be forming right here, which means we are going to want blocks to be on the side of this to kind of keep it in here. So we're going to put blocks like this and we're going to have to break that torch. I don't know. Yeah, we can't even pick it up right now and blocks like this. And we'll just break these blocks up here. So we have a little bit more room to work with. Of course, we want to get rid of that stone just because can't even pick any of it up, but that's going to be forming right there. And are we stuck in here now? We are stuck in here. Okay, we're going to break this block and we're going to get out. It gets a little bit annoying to make, especially when you can't fly. But so the water is going to be going right here and we can place that down right now. And it should not flow anywhere once it gets down here. So we do have to make sure we block these off right here and right here. But as you can see now, it should be stopped and every block will land on this half slab. So the stone will be formed right in front of this. And what we can do now is take this mana spreader and we can have this in bind mode and I'll just build a staircase up here to get up and we can bind it right here. Now it doesn't matter that it's angled a little bit. It just needs to be going through this block right here. And what we're going to do is take our weighted mana lens and we are going to right click it onto this. So what that does, if you don't already know, is it basically adds weight to a block and makes it fall like gravel or sand from where it is. So when the stone blocks fall, they will hit this half slab down here. They can't be placed on that. So they will just break and kind of bounce off and they'll sit right there, which will eventually, you know, we'll pick them up and we'll be good to go. So now that we have that, we need to get the lava in here. Now the lava needs to land right above this block right here. And something that you guys mentioned in a previous episode when we set up the automatic stone generation over there is that this can sometimes bug out if you just place a lava block there and allow it to flow on its own. So we're going to be using a dispenser 
and it's going to be timed. So we're going to put it down right here and we're going to put down a hovering hourglass on each side of it. So we're going to be putting 20 sand in each of these. It doesn't need to be, you can use, you know, any kind of sand, but we're going to be doing 20 sand on each of these. And I guess we can fill up this nine sand right here. So that's 20 and that's 20. So you want to make sure we have these very close to each other and we're going to finish filling this in before we actually put these on. And you'll see why in a second, but what we're going to do is cover these three blocks right here. And eventually we will cover this block right here uh, so that we don't accidentally go into the lava. So what we're going to do is take a bucket of lava, which will go right in here. Now, if you don't know a dispenser, basically when it's got a bucket of lava in it or a bucket of anything, it will dispense it and then given another signal, it will pick it back up. So basically to prevent the lava from sitting there and, you know, glitching out, which is very, very rare, but will happen eventually is we're going to pick it up very quickly and then redispense it. So what we can do is throw 20 sand in here. And I'm going to describe this first before we do it. I might not even get the timing right the first time, but we're going to throw 20 sand in here. We're going to wait like one second and we're going to throw 20 sand in the next hourglass after the lava has been dispensed. So we throw the 20 sand in there. Once this 20 sand runs out and you can see it's 20 seconds, we are going to wait for that to finish. It's going to dispense lava. Then we're going to wait till it dispenses it in for one split second. And then we're going to put some more sand in here and you'll see why once it does a round trip. So it's getting there, getting the fingers ready, getting the trigger finger ready. So it's dispensed the lava and then we throw those in. So what that's going to do is now the timing should be perfect that every 20 seconds, the lava will get picked back up for a split second and then immediately put back out. Now we want to make sure that this is not too close so that the signals don't kind of interfere with each other. But we're going to make sure that the lava gets picked up and there we go, picked up and there we go, immediately put back out. So that was really good timing. It was pretty much just enough timing that there won't be a little glitch. Obviously, it can get buggy if it goes, you know, in out like for the signal. Uh, it won't, you know, actually work if it does that. But what we can do now is cover this up and we should be good to go. So now there should be stone right in front of this. And that's great because the minute we put sand into our hovering hourglass, it is going to uh, you know, basically immediately start working. We've got the weighted lens there. All we need really is mana in this mana pool down here. And it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to actually get mana in there just because uh, this is on top of it. So worst case scenario, I'll take this off, put some mana in here and we can go. But now it is time that we actually get down our orchid. So we can put this really anywhere. And I really want to place it down right below this mana pool. I've never actually tested if it works below a mana pool like this. But with a range so big, uh, I basically cleared it out perfectly for being right in front of this mana pool or right below this mana pool. So we're going to try throwing it down here and we're going to verify that it's OK once we put uh, a little bit of mana in here. So I guess what we can do now is actually break this and it's unfortunate, but I'll have to rebind it in a little bit. Um, but we I don't really think we can get a mana tablet down in here. If we grab one out, we can try, but I don't think we'll be able to throw one in there with the way it's situated right now. We can hop up here and try and toss one in here, but oh, we did manage to make it in. Okay, so the orchid should start working and it should. Oh, that's not what we want to hear. Okay, so it's turning other stuff into. Oh, okay, so clearly there is something in the range of this that is getting turned. That is not this block right here. That very loud, loud noise you hear is it turning other blocks. So I might hop off camera and find out where these blocks are and then we'll jump back. Okay, guys, so we are back. Now, I actually just took the easiest way out that I knew how to. And I just threw some mana tablets in there and really hoped that there wouldn't be that many stone blocks that I missed when clearing out this area and that it would be quick and only waste a little bit of mana. So it took about, you know, half a pool of mana or so. It turned this block right here to coal, which is great. Uh, because it means that that is functioning properly and it finished turning all the other blocks because right now if there were blocks in the radius it would be able to convert them and so we should be good now there are some random ore blocks that will all be situated in the same area somewhere in this wall here but i'll leave those for another day when i decide that i want to clear out this area a little bit more so what we can do now is kind of get rid of this block right here and we can get rid of these blocks right here now obviously if we really wanted to you know recharge this we would probably want another block on the other side so it would make it easier to throw the, the mana tablet in here. But eventually we won't actually be using mana tablets. It'd probably be easier to just fire a mana spreader in there or something along those lines. But we're not going to put this hovering hourglass to work just yet. We're going to get everything else set up first so that we don't actually need to worry about wasting anything when we're doing this. So 
what we can do now is start setting up all of the different chests and hoppers and all that good stuff to get this to work. So we've got a fair bit of item frames, fair bit of hopper hawks that we need to filter stuff out in. And I believe the way that I want to do it is put one hopper hawk right over here and we'll have the processing set up right here. I might have to break a couple blocks, but this should work fine. So we're going to put one hopper hawk right here and the other one will go somewhere over here, maybe even right next to it right here. Uh, not exactly sure yet. Yeah, we could probably, we could probably manage that. Uh, maybe not. We might move it a little bit out, but this one is the one that we're focusing on right now. Now, this one is a very interesting one because this is the one that is going to be getting us all of our coal and everything to cook. So the first thing we're going to do is put a chest down and it's going to go, actually, we're not going to use a chest. We are going to use a hopper. My mistake. We're going to put a hopper down and it's going to go right here. So this would pick anything up and throw it in there. But instead, we're actually going to break this right here. We'll break this wall and kind of replace some of this stuff. And of course, the hopper hawk is picking it up right now. But I'll break this whole wall and I'll just move it over one so that it'll look a little bit nicer. Oh, there. Wow. I can't believe I missed those blocks. But there we have emerald ore right there. Interesting. So look, you can see the emeralds. Wow, this is a lot of blocks that I missed right here. Okay, well, we're just getting all this stuff. You know what? I'll leave the rest there for now. It doesn't really matter that much to me. I don't have the dirt to fill it in with, but we'll just fill this in like so, and we'll get some of these living rock to fill in this last area right here. So we'll clear out this area. Now, the main reason I'm making so much space is because we need to put a lot, a lot of different item frames on every side of a chest. If you didn't already know, uh, you can put a ton of item frames on any inventory and allow a hopper hawk to pick up like, you know, four different types of items guaranteed per inventory. You don't just need to use one. So that's what we're going to be doing on this one. So that should be good right there. Okay, so this has a bunch of random stuff in it right now, but obviously I went out and I gathered one of every ore that we need. So we're going to get item frames and this one is going to only actually be using two different ores. So it's going to be uh, the iron ore that we have and the gold ore that we have. So the reason it's only going to be using these two is because these are the only ones that we can actually cook down in a furnace. So the furnace is going to go directly below this and it gets a little bit awkward with how we have to retrieve this stuff um, just because of you know how it's actually set up and I should have elevated it a little bit more than it is right now, but it's perfectly fine. I don't mind actually going down to get this set up. So we're going to do that and now this furnace is going to cook stuff once it has everything in there. So if we were to take uh, some iron and throw it down, it would get picked up and put into this furnace because it's getting input in the top. Next thing we're gonna do is we need to get the coal put into the back of it. So we're going to break this block right here, this one and this one, and we're gonna make another hopper set up to bring it all the way down there. So what we're gonna do is put a hopper attached to this and then we need to get back here somehow. And actually, yeah, it doesn't matter right now because no liquid is coming down here but we need to then get a hopper attached to that and finally put one straight up like this. And then we are going to get an item frame and we are going to put it on here and we are going to set it to be coal. So, oh, whoops, that is not what we wanted. We're gonna set it to be coal and an item frame ended up down there. And then we can place this back down and we should be fine. Now, the reason we're having this be coal, a regular coal, and this is gonna bother me that it's tilted, but you know what, we're gonna leave it there because setting up this setup is tilting me right now because there's so many complications. But basically what this means is anytime coal drops, it's going to get put into the bottom portion of this. Now you could set this up a different way, but it would still utilize a fair bit of hoppers. The way you could do it is by taking this hopper hawk and putting it directly adjacent to this furnace. And then you could use hoppers to input, uh, put a hopper right above this that would go over and then put it into this furnace itself. The reason though I want to use hoppers for both is it allows for a backup and with the amount of coal we're getting, we're going to need a fair bit of backup space for this because you're going to get coal majority of the time. So the next thing that we need to worry about now is getting the rest of the stuff and actually getting the coal ore to turn into regular coal. So we've got a lot of space over here so we don't actually need to keep it super close. The hopper hawk has a radius of 10 when it's actually bound to something such as this mana pool. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. It is just going to get over here. It's not going to interfere with any of that though. So what we can do is take this right here and I guess we can place our floating hopper hawk, our second one down right over, uh, you know what? Let's say right over, I want to say somewhere like right here. Um, 
yeah, let's throw it down right here for now. It's not super crucial. And what we can do is take a chest and we can come and we can put it right above this if we really wanted to. And we can take and put all these item frames down. Now it's a little bit awkward because we've got to get four on there. And I don't know, we can probably, I bet we can fit one in behind here. We just got to break these blocks first. Uh, so can we put a block down with that there? Yeah, we can. Okay, awesome. So it's important that you have four on this because we need one for diamond. And we'll put the diamond one on the front because it's fancy. And then we need one for redstone. The emerald or the lapis one can go on the back because that's the ugliest of all blocks. We'll put the redstone down there. Obviously, it doesn't matter at all where they go. But we can do that there. Emerald one there and lapis one there. And then we can fill this back in on this wall. So there we go. So now, oh, oh, does it pop it off when you fill that in? Okay, maybe we'll have to leave an air block back there. Or we could just put this down. I guess, you know what? Let's just leave an air block back there. We'll leave an air block. Because we do need that to be there to get lapis. So we'll put this there. Lapis there. And that there. It's not even that bad. You can't really see it that much. Eventually, I could move this. Uh, but we'll leave it here for now. So the next thing we're going to do is take this block right here. And we're going to break it. And it doesn't really matter if you have dirt down there. Because we're going to be putting an open crate right over here. Now, of course, this is bound to this hopper hawk, and we're going to be putting an item frame onto this, and this is going to be our coal ore. So it's going to go right there, and of course, you could for this setup make it so that only one coal ore is out in the world at once, but I'm going to be setting it up so you really don't need to worry about that so much. Uh, the next thing we are going to do is set our random carpus up. So basically what this does is all of these ores will get collected here. These will get cooked down here. So really the coal ore needs to get dropped. We need to have a random carpus break it. And once we have that, we'll be picking the coal ore back up. So let's take a look at this hopper hawk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it goes to this block right here. One over from that. Now I'm going to keep that in mind when I'm worrying about my coal. So we can break all of these blocks right here and we can start setting this up. So we can do one, two, three, four, five. So I expected we might be able to do six, but it'll just vary depending on your setup. So we're gonna take this and go one, two, three, four, five. And then we can take another block and we can go right here and go like this. So this is where our floating random carpus will go. And really it's only going to be picking up uh, the coal that is dropped. So what we can do right now is take our infestation spore before we put this down and put it on this hopper hawk right here. Now you could use a boreal seed, but the main goal is that this needs to pick up the coal that's dropped from here after the random carpus has a chance to pick it up and place it down. So we'll place that down there. Now something that we need to be careful about is we don't want this picking up things from over here. And eventually I'm gonna get rid of this setup or move it over so it doesn't interfere with this. But for now, we'll leave it like so. As you can see, it's not really picking anything up. And the blocks that drop down here will not get picked up by it. They'll get picked up by the hopper hawks first. That's why we've got this open crate right here. Now these should all be bound to this mana pool right here, no problem. And all we need to do is set up a way for something to actually go through this and break the blocks. So we're going to be setting that up right over here, which is going to be a pulse mana spreader that can go right here. We're going to put down a mana pool. I think a mana pool right on top of it will function perfectly fine. It's getting a little cramped. I might actually move this over back over here one more. But we're going to take a hovering hourglass and we're going to put it down right next to it. And then we're going to put a mana pool right at the end here to catch the excess mana. So what this will do is it'll basically bore through all of these once we put the bore lens on it. And get caught in this mana pool. And then all the stuff that's broken here will get picked up and be put back in here. So the setup should actually be pretty ready to go once I get this sand in here. So we're going to use 25 sand for this. And then we're going to use eight sand for this. So moment of truth, guys, we need to fill some of these up with mana. I'll grab out the mana tablet. We'll throw one full mana tablet into this one. Oh, there we go. We'll let that one charge. We'll throw one full mana tablet into this one if we can make it in there. Actually, they might get, no, they can't get picked up because all these inventories are, are restricted. So let's see if we can get the mana tablet in there. Yep. It was it depositing stuff in there. It looked like it was for a second. Let's see. No, it does not look like it is. Okay, well, let's throw this down over here and let's give it one more shot. See if we can get it in there. I feel like you should be able to. I feel like I have before, but apparently this game hates me right now. I don't even know where that went. Okay, well, we got that one. 
I just like lost a mana tablet somewhere, I guess. That mana tablet just disappeared so much. Okay, well, at least it'll be able to turn a couple blocks. Maybe it got picked up by this hopper hawk over here. No. This one right here. No. This one. No. Yeah, I didn't really think so. Okay, well, we have enough mana in there for now that we can test it out. And eventually, I will have some mana firing over here from somewhere else. But we're going to, like I said, throw 25 in here. And it really doesn't matter when this goes. Eventually, it'll kind of reset itself. And then we're going to throw 8 in here. And we're going to hope it works. So, moment of truth. This one is really only going to need to speed up. We might even want to slow this one down even more. But you can see that one should drop. It should have time to make that. Hopefully, it has time to turn. Uh, eventually, okay, so it did have just enough time to turn. Oh, and there's our thing back there. It's way in the back. Okay, well, you can see it places that down. It bores it, and then it should pick it up. We've got another one going there. It should get placed down there eventually. Then it'll bore it, and it'll come back over here, and it's cooking down the iron in the furnace. And if we wanted, I have another hopper, and we'd have a chest to get set up below this furnace. But there's no, you know, extreme need for that right now. The chest would end up going right here. But as you can see, the whole setup should be working perfectly. Uh, once we get some of these blocks, we'll be able to see, but... It is pretty loud. I'll probably end up turning it off a fair bit, but that's the main reason for the lever, which is right here. And that lever is going to go right next to this. And we can just flip it when we want to turn it off. Now, one thing to note is you have to make sure the timing is correct because if you get it a little buggy, you might end up getting some stone. It can adjust a little bit if you have too much time between the lava coming in and going out. Uh, because if you have that, it'll mess it up a little bit. Just something to keep in mind, but as you can see, we're about to get some redstone, which will end up going in there. And we've got our iron in there. If we've gotten any gold, it would sit in there. So this is the completed setup for the orchids. So pretty awesome setup, if you ask me. Um, I do not take credit for doing all this setup on my own. I did make a lot of tweaks on my own, especially to timing, because there were a fair bit of adjustments that were made, especially considering, as you can see, when you hear that thud, that is the orchid turning the stone block, but it does not happen instantly. Most setups, like I said, are made for it happening instantly. I give it the allotted eight seconds that it might need, and you can see right there, we just got a stone block. It gets a little buggy when it doesn't turn enough. You can give it 10 seconds if you want, uh, and it looks like I might have to do that. Oh, you know what it is? We don't have any more mana in here. That's the problem. So we're going to shut this off now. That'll happen if you do run out of mana. You'll start getting regular stone. Not too big of a deal, but uh, yeah. So that is the setup, guys. If you found the video entertaining or informative in any way, please feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot. Now, something I want to note is this video is going to be uploaded on the 24th. I am probably going to take a day off on Christmas. I hope you guys understand. I'm, you know, going to be upgrading my computer. So, you know, I'm going to be taking things out. I got my new CPU, my new motherboard. So I really am not probably going to be able to record then. Um, but I'm sure you guys will understand. It's a day for family and friends to spend together. So I do want to say right now to you guys, uh, a little bit of an early Merry Christmas. If you do celebrate Christmas, I always got to be cautious about saying that so I don't offend anyone. But, uh, yeah, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays. I hope you guys have a great day. Eat a ton of good food with your family and friends. I hope, you know, you enjoy the day, relax, have a good time, and, you know, be sure to watch a fair bit of Dr. Rage Hard. But, again, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.